A pitch to close Ebor early faces fierce resistance from businesses and workers. The next move from the city council after today's meeting. And Tampa City Council did get an earful today from business owners and workers about the plan to shut down Ebor at 1 a.m. Thank you for joining us on 10 Tampa Bay. I'm Courtney Robinson. I'm Josh Sudor. Was their message was heard loud and clear today. And I don't understand how you guys think that would be a great idea to close a bar now at 1 o'clock instead of stationing them in front of those individual bars. And I'd be happy to pay for an off-duty police officer every single night that we're open. And now you're trying to take away a major source of income from us because of something that is unrelated. It's come and talk to us. Spend a weekend in our bars, in our hotels, seeing what we see. And Tampa Bay Shannon Clo has been in that meeting all day long. And Shannon, listening in throughout the day, it seems like a majority of people who were speaking, they were against this plan. Well, Courtney and Josh, I was inside and there were 36 people who spoke today. Only two of them were for that curfew. Everyone else we heard from bartenders, bar owners saying it was a hard no from them, but they did come to the stand with solutions. Everyone agrees what happened in Ybor City Sunday morning is a tragedy. We talk about the 14 year old that passed away and we not mention his name. His name was Elijah Wilson. And 20 year old Harrison Boonstoppel was killed. Everyone in this room also agrees that should never happen. And it's disgusting that I have to sit here and look at blood on my streets and I have to walk these streets. A proposal from Councilwoman Gwendolyn Henderson to change the hours of operation for Ebor bars and clubs to close at one in the morning instead of three is where this crowd and this council clash. But well, we're not going to solve the problem by imposing curfews because what you do is run it from one block to the next block. Many in the hospitality industry say cutting hours cuts paychecks and jobs. Now you're trying to take away a major source of income from us. Cutting into our pocketbooks and the pocketbooks of local business. If you take a bartender who's working a 10 hour shift, you take two hours away from him, you're effectively taking 20% of his income away. I would have to get rid of at least 50% of my employees. I would have to lay off my dishwashers. Everyone recognizes safe solutions are needed. I'd like to install video cameras, more video cameras. Metal detectors at the doors of some of these clubs. We must keep the traffic moving on 7th Avenue all the time. Chief Burkhoff said we can get more patrol. Another solution is creating a curfew for those under age. If you're under the age of 21, you're not adding to the, the economy in, in Ybor. The curfew for juveniles, thank you so much. That's what... And a big issue that with the curfew for everyone was that there are legalities there where city officials really can't put that into place. But council said regardless, they want to wait till there's more details from the investigation before they make their decision. And we did hear from the police chief today, and he tells us the investigation is ongoing and he is still looking for two additional suspects. I'm in Tampa, Shannon Clo, 10 Tampa Bay. Shannon, thank you. And Councilmember Henderson, who brought forward this proposal, says at the next CRA meeting that they'll look for additional funds that they could put toward expanding community policing and stepping up code enforcement in the area. Now, while the police chief doesn't think that they should keep 7th Avenue open to traffic at all times, he is open to looking into the possibility of changing the time that they do shut down the street.